All right. This is a working house, and we are going to see about modifying it here. It's honestly, in my opinion, the cheapest made house Lemax has ever made, mainly because it's plastic. Uh, for those who haven't already purchased or seen one in person, it's mostly plastic. This part's resin, this part's resin, but it is a plastic house, plastic gears. Which the gears I understand. Um, plastic base, plastic characters, plastic. It's also one of the more expensive houses this year. So I'm not sure if it's just my opinion, but I did buy one because I think it does look neat. And on some of the Lemax forums online, Facebook mainly, uh, I've seen a couple that have been repainted and they look pretty good. So what well, this one is to see about modifying the eyeballs. For those who haven't seen it, let me turn off some lights. That way you can see what it looks like. And we'll turn the volume up. Just thing. We have an idea what it looks like in case it doesn't go back together, which would be a very expensive mistake. Because a um, very expensive house. So, turn the volume down. Turn the lights back on. And the first thing we're going to do is unplug it. So, there's a lot of discontent with the new Lemax line. Probably has a lot to do with COVID, uh, shipping stuff and building stuff in China to the U.S. Uh, and then, of course, most people buy these from Michaels, and Michaels has a really interesting uh, competitor coupon policy, is, and um, they don't really accept them anymore. So, couldn't use those 50 and 60% coupons anymore. Anyhow, like most Lemax, it's got the rubber mat on the bottom. And this one seems it should be easier because it's peeling up already right here. And this was just taken out of the box yesterday. So we're not talking it's been on display for a month or two. I waited to the last minute to buy it, hoping uh, I could wait till I hit 40% off at Michael's so I didn't have to pay as much. Because at the Michaels I go to, it's 120 bucks, and it's like the second or third most expensive house this year. So first thing we do is check the bottom, see if it's like every other Lee Max. It comes apart from the bottom. I'm not sure. This is the first plastic house, so we're gonna learn together. I was skeptical at first about getting this house because of it being plastic, but I really do like the fact that it's probably one of the more colorful houses and it will stand out so you have that one item that's different than the rest. Alright, here's the bottom. I actually got off on one piece and you can see this, um, <laughs> it left the paper, so this is stamped out in a big sheet, and this is the paper you peel to expose the adhesive. You can see the grid pattern, which kind of looks like that pattern. And at the bottom is a grid of plastic. And, let me make sure I'm not going to break anything if I set it on this roof carefully. We have, looks like a clip here, a clip here, and a big clip here. I'm not sure if that's how you take it apart, and possibly some push-in clips here, 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 here. Push-in clips is where you stick the screwdriver in and it disconnects it from the inside. These are external clips. That's what they appear. I don't know. Never taken this thing apart. Uh, and it's brand new. So, I'm going to just inspect around the base of the house. See if I see anything obvious for disassembly. You can see right here, there's a gap where you can stick the spudger in, and you can see the wall flex. So, and I 
as well flexes too. Actually, I'm wondering if the back just pops off this piece. Let's see if I can get the rough to flex. I can't. all one big back piece all right looks like the edge of the brick separated right here at this pipe goes over here right here underneath the gray down to here the bottom appears to be glued because there's some glue residue right here right here all along the power and volume switch can't really lean it on the front Although when I got it, everything on the front was pushed in from the packaging. But I'm wondering if this doesn't come apart from the bottom, if this one comes apart from the back. So let's see if uh, we can get into this thing. Ooh. That wasn't good. See if I can get another spudger or something in there. It uh, might clip together and it might be glued. There we go, it's clipped. So this might be an easier house to repair. Might. But here is a set of clips. So there's probably one right here. There is. That one's disconnected. Now let's see if I can get up in this corner and try and pop it. Starting to stretch the plastic. See if I can get some light in the subject and see what's going on. This is a homemade tool. It's a piece of bent aluminum. It was ground down with a notch. It was actually used. I used it for um, when I did remote control cars many, many years ago. When I used to build suspension, it helped compress the spring so I could remove the top. Basically, it's just a homemade spudger now. So I know some people ask the tools and where I get them. Still looks like there's a clip on this side. Place a box underneath the end so that way the lights aren't smashing into the, the desk. There's a clip there. Right here at the base of this uh, exhaust muffler looking thing. Got it. Another clip right here. I'm 
trying to look down inside to see what is holding the base on, which could just be the glue. But just in case it's that pin and that pin there, I'm going to find a small blade screwdriver and we'll fit inside and we'll see if that pops it. There's also this big clip. Yeah, once this thing opens up, it'll be like really easy to figure out after just figuring out the first time. Oh, the circuit board's supposed to be glued right behind this uh, cubby. The glue has already broken free, and the board's just bouncing around on the inside. That's nice. Uh, the speaker is directly behind this door, which if I can get this back plate off, you'll be able to see it all. I really don't want to break it. with a screwdriver. I do see a clip on the bottom, on the inside. That's what I was trying to get with the screwdriver. There we go. Clips out of the way. All right, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm gonna take a second with the heat gun warm up. And I am going to apply heat right here on this glue line. Let's see if that's what's holding it. I have it set at a low temperature, which isn't going to sound like a low temperature. It's set for 100 degrees centigrade, which is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. I want it hot enough to start breaking down the glue and resin, but not so hot I start melting the plastic. The plastic's temperature is higher than the resin and or glue they use. I think it's working. Better I'm breaking it. That's why I'm doing it, so you don't have to do it at home and risk shattering yours. You should never have to open this unless you want to one, modify it, or two, fix it.
and this does not want to come out. These two indentations, these two small ones on each side, are the the pins that I can see on the inside because I push this one out of the way and then when I look through this hole right here, it's not there anymore. So I think it's a combination of this one, probably this big one, and the glue. But that big one I cannot see in here. It almost looks like it's just part of the standard casting. doing now is I'm still heating up the glue, but I'm putting pressure on it with my hand so as the glue gets soft, hopefully the back starts peeling down. And of course, once it's open, if this was the incorrect way to open this house, um, I should be able to see the correct way. Or, let's rephrase that, since there's no correct way, you're not supposed to service these. We'll see if it's uh, the easiest way. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this. Oh, starting to come out actually. Look at that. Come on. Got it. Yep, it was the glue right there. So, the big pin in the middle on the bottom is this piece right here. Sorry, went off camera. And then two smaller clips. There's one here and one there. That one I broke or I cracked it. It's still there. I'll pull it forward, probably put a dab of glue on it just to hold it in place. Um, here is the power. I have a loose wire hanging here, which I probably just unplugged. I'm assuming it goes in this empty pin right here, which is... They're using a very small, basically a Molex connector. Click it back in. only goes in one way. It's got little teeth that prevent it from going in upside down. Now I'm going to turn it back onto its front. So you can see what's inside. So, we have two circuit boards. One's the board that controls everything. Here's your blob chip, which is the proprietary information. Probably a smoothing capacitor, some timing chips, resistors, capacitors, a whole nine. I'm assuming, because there's pins here, that probably match this, and there's a dab of glue there, that this bigger circuit board was probably adhered there. Because the spacing of the pins is bigger than those two holes. This has four holes. And here's your speaker. Here's a dead area. Interesting. Here's one of your gears. Your drive motor is right there. I'll use something thinner than my hands so you can see. Drive motor is right here. So this would probably be the easiest way to take it apart. Make sure that you heat the bottom. So like I said, you can see I, I uh, took the gray paint off the plastic because that's where it was really adhered. Not so much here, but I needed to heat that a little bit more and I ended up cracking the paint off. So if you ever have to service this, and what's really nice about this one, so maybe their cheaper design is going to make it easier to service when it breaks because everything mechanical and electrical fails at some point. Everything is put together with Phillips screws. So you just need a little, this is a blade, but a little Phillips screwdriver to start disassembling it. Make sure you remember how you disassembled it so you don't screw it up. Let's just make sure everything still functions. Make sure nothing is binding on the front. So there's how the inside looks when it's moving.
And then this piece, which is separate, is clipped on. There's two clips there, and I can see one clip in here, which means that technically you could then remove this section, which is one big section with one, two clips on the bottom to the base, and probably some glue in here too, I would assume. So, anyhow, the modification to this was for the eyeballs. Those two guys right there. I think they'd be kind of cool if they lit up. It was actually suggested by somebody on YouTube who put it in the comments asking if there's a way to make the eyes light up. Um, I don't know. We're going to see if it's possible without breaking this. But through this tutorial, You'll be able to see about repairing this when it fails. Uh, the lights up in here are the green wires here. The lights that up here is this green wire there. They're using an LED strip. This there is the end of the strip tape. These are probably just LEDs, the standard uh, bulb shape. There's a lot of wire in here for such a small little house. I'm going to untwist it so I can Move it all out of the way. I am going to unplug the distribution board from the main board. Gives me a little bit more room. And then I'm going to unplug the, looks like it goes to the front. Nope, this is the speaker. It's not the one I wanted. I want to unplug this one which goes to the front, because I want to untangle the wire. Now you can take pictures and label these if you want to take them all out so you know where they go. Do not want to reverse them. The different voltages and different resistive loads can damage the circuit board uh, beyond repair, because you would end up damaging the blob chip versus the little components. So, to get to this, there's also a motor right here with a pulley. And I'm going to assume that that motor drives just the eyes. I could be wrong. There's another motor here which drives this belt, and the smaller motor here drives that belt. And there's another motor in the bottom behind the speaker, which is also glued in, which has a pulley that is visible. Speaker is just glued in. Just chip the plastic of the speaker, not of the house. Because this is probably going to be in the way. So let's heat it up and see if I can remove it. moving this away because I can see the bottom is starting to get warm and flex so I don't want to break the bottom or destroy the bottom. I got all the glue except for this one corner. Heat it up a little bit more. Get this out of the way. corner I chipped so broke off completely that's fine there's a big dab of glue here 
and there's a small little bit right here and a small little bit right here. I can get the heat gun here and here, but this one didn't want to break free, so it actually ended up just breaking the edge off, which is right there. It's inside. Again, it's not a big thing to me. If it's yours, you might want to heat it up longer, but be careful when I was heating it and putting pressure, I was watching the bottom of the house bow out because this is all plastic. Plastic doesn't care for heat. But now you can see the pulley and the motor and the belt. So next, use a pair of tweezers and I'm going to take the belt off so I don't damage it. I'm going to set it off to the side so hopefully I don't lose it. And I'm going to try and unscrew this plate. Small Phillips screwdriver. Probably need those tweezers again to pull the screws out. Maybe. There's one. And I'm taking out the screws with the flanges these two screws right here is actually what holds the motor to the plate. That little screw there and that little screw there is actually what screws the motor in. You unscrew those, the motor will fall. Well, because I have it laying on its front, it will fall inside. And there's another screw over here. It's not a flange screw, but it's in the same cup. So either they didn't put a flange screw in because they couldn't fit it, or they just didn't care. Screws a screw as long as the threads are the same. You know, that's probably what they were thinking. And that screw does not want to come out. There we go. So, kind of see the difference between a, a pan or a flange screw in this case and a normal screw. The uh, threaded parts are basically the same. Alright, so what this motor, look at all that grease. <laughs> so what this motor is doing is, and the reason I took the belt off was this one here, I was afraid that if I slipped I could puncture the belt. The motor turns the pulley, which then turns all the gear reductions. This gear then drives these gears right here, which make the eyes go in a spiral or cross-eyed, out eyes. So. This is how you would open this up to check this. Um, if you ever had to change this belt, when you lose your eyeballs, there you go. Uh, and there's the belt. Gears. This is the same gear they use on the um, Roundup and the Ghost Around to lift and lower. And yeah, it's a pretty standard gearbox. If you find a broken Limax house at like a Goodwill or a thrift store that the gears are still intact. You can buy it and you have the same gears that they put in almost every one of their houses. So now to get to the eyeballs, that's going to be a little bit more difficult. Now that we have no access here, this is the door. Again, I'll use a screwdriver. But this is the door on the front, a fake door. So that means the eyeballs are up here, which this houses the motor for both drives. And I don't believe it's going to come out easy. And it looks like I'm going to have to remove this assembly and this assembly. This right here is the, and this right here is what the belt goes around on. It's the pulley, the toy belt that's right there on the front. So, And of course, I'll take it apart, and if it's not the correct thing to take off, uh, then we'll... It almost looks like an access door. Then we'll see what the correct way would be. Let's set those two screws up there. No screws on the bottom. There is a set of clips on the bottom here. set of 
clips right here. Yeah, this thing's all clipped together. Of course, we got the clips up here. Might have to remove this assembly. Clipped here, here, here. There's two right there. Of course, this is clipped to this white housing. Unfortunately, I can't see the front. You gotta be careful because there is an LED strip right there that is glued down. That if you break this free, you could rip that strip out. You have to find the green wire, which is right there, and just unplug them from the circuit board. If you're afraid of damaging it, if you yank it out. No, I broke the glue on that one. I'm trying to rest it on its front. Alright, this needs to come out too. Need to get to that. So. that strip out. Let's see if I unscrew this, if this gear, oh, let me see. Before I do that, do a closer inspection. This holds the gear on the front, this flat head, or pan head. It doesn't tighten all the way so the gear can spin, so we don't want to take that one out. So it's going to probably be these three screws right here. This is also slid in here, there's two clips. So this is the recess compartment that says do not open on the box. So I'm gonna have to glue that back in. That screw that I was telling you that I don't have to remove is this gear right here. Or any flex in this to get it off of the clip, the plastic clip. There is flex, but not enough. Back my spudger. Okay. Set of clips here for the roof. I'm wondering if I can get the, the roof to pop off. Try and come in from the top. Yeah, this one's not even in all the way. It's front one. Okay. 
And I'm sure they probably added some glue. But we're gonna we're gonna see. Probably glue this pipe on. not glued on anymore. At least not that part. This part might be. There's another clip right here. Let's see if I can bend it out of the way. So I think now my biggest issue is the glue that's right up in here. So can I get the... Yep. There we go. So there's the glue there. There's still some residue that's holding here on the stack. This is going to be one heck of a jigsaw puzzle when I put it back together. Reminds me of a toy from the 80s. Some assembly required. Or in my case, a lot of disassembly required. Let's see if I can get the tire at the bottom to separate. Taking this wall with it. big clip that I pointed out earlier. It's not glued, so I can flex the base around it. And this side's probably glued. Yeah. Probably. 
probably not something you want to do with your brand new house. completely disconnected from that little circuit board. I'm going to move it out of the way. I'm going to wedge this spudger on this side. And I'm going to try and heat the resin here. goes through the bottom. There we go. Right there. Oops. Wasn't supposed to fall out of my hand. Oh. Might be tough for y'all to watch. Trust me, it's tough for me to do it. Both physically and the fact that I just bought this thing. So, there's a clip here. See if we can separate it. So clip here. The board isn't attached well to the house. Not attached anymore to the unit. Um, it's only attached to the base. And that's one clip and two clip. And only had a small dab of glue behind the trash can with a little monster sticking out. So now we get a much closer look at the mechanisms and make it work. So there's the pulley here, the belt, the belt there, there's the gear drive that runs it, and the motor's right here. This gear drive is basically driven off of this shaft, and all it's designed to do is make these external gears go. So it's not a integral part. If this gear broke, this belt would still turn. It just, uh, these would stop turning, the gears there. So. Now that I have the sidewalls off, I can see that part of my problem is there's a dab of glue right here. It is causing this base to stick, which apparently is broke. There we go. And we got screws that go through this piece, which is still attached, that are screwed into this counter. I'm peel the wall off. Since it's not attached. And that's one of the things that's holding this in. But now that I've removed that wall, since it was only held in with a little bit of glue right here, you probably see it. It's actually uh, hot melt glue by the feel. I can then pull that one out of its clip. Now I need to unscrew the front gear apparently because that's what's preventing me from removing it. So I'll just unscrew the gear. There's the screw, there's the gear. Put them together. There's the back wall. Transmission's still intact. Just had to remove that gear. 
and then this gear fits through that hole which then lines up with that white gear there so when you put it back in if you ever have to disassemble your house like this <laughs> let's hope you don't maybe I'll be an example of what not to do because again this is a very expensive house so now we can see this assembly here a little bit clearer. There are screws back here, so this section, excuse me, this section still has to come out. So let's move the wires out of the way. The base is a lot more free with the wall gone. As you can see, this now has flex. There we go. And there's the back wall above that pulley system. So if you can get the base to release, you can just push it down and help lift that one. And then this assembly comes out with your quarter wall and your pillar. And then there's another clip here that holds the base on. base is off. Now we'll set that over there. It's a good thing to clean my workbench. I have a lot more room to set everything on. There are two screws up in here and two screws down in here. This assembly should lift technically. I'll remove these screws. Because of the pain in the butt this is, this might be a two-parter. First part is just uh, disassembly to get to the, the eyes to see if they're modifiable. And the second part is probably going to be a reassembly with a lot of pausing because that's going to take forever for the glue to dry. If I ever sell my collection, you'll know that this house was reassembled with uh, glue. My own setup, meaning that it's either going to be super glue, hot glue, or a mixture. Here's the other two screws. Just uh, set those over there. There's another clip right here. Something else is holding it. Oh, there we go. I'm going to do a trick that I showed once before to make sure everything goes back where it's supposed to. That's blue. That's orange. Peach. 
Maybe this one over here is purple. Where do these two wires go? So this one's the blue one. And this one's the purple one. The reason I want to make sure the same is looking at the circuit board, these resistors have different values because the lights have different um, powers. And now, going to pull out this pulley, which there's one screw that's missing here. Probably, oh yeah, one of the screws that held the back on. There's one screw right here. That screw. Why is she stuck? What is she stuck on? Hmm. Screw going all the way through? Nope. Not this one. acting like there's another, there is, there is, there's another screw right up in here. Uh, it's going to be really hard to see in there, especially since I'm now in the shadow of the light. It's right by where the skull is. So that's going to be a pain to get to, but I think I can flex enough of the screwdriver and the belt to get it out. This screw and this screw and set off to the side. Now full access to the front. Holy smokes. This thing cost me a hundred dollars. Like I said, I got with the 40% off at Michael's. And I am Tearing it apart. And I could be wrong, there may not be any motors in here. They may only have the one motor that drives everything using a whole bunch of gears. Because it doesn't look like motors. So it looks like a gear pack. what it is. So these humps are not motors. It's a gear pack. It's a set of gears that transfer to the drive shaft. It transfers the energy from these gears into here. So it drives probably this bigger one down here, which drives the eyes, and then it runs off the belt. And then it drives this one, which drives this one, which drives that belt. So they use one motor and a whole bunch of gears. This one's on the eye. So these two big gears are the eyeballs. So if I take this planetary gear out, let's see, Ooh, eyeball spins. Take that one out. That eyeball spins. Making these eyes light up 
It will be very difficult. And that little gray gear is what drives this gear. Which in turn drives that one and that one. So the hideous hairy sign rotates. So there is going to be no easy way to make these eyes light up. Because even if you try to drill a hole, you'd have to make sure everything is completely flush to not get caught in the teeth of the all the gears. So these gears are pressed on. But let's uh, let's just see if we could do it, which we're still going to try. What it would look like if I can get a light down inside there. So first things first. Let's uh, let's get an LED. Let's go with a little LED. This is a three millimeter LED. This is a homemade LED tester. Let's see, it lights up. I'm gonna go kill some lights and we're gonna see what happens if we can get the light. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and stick this in the shaft. There's a hole in the shaft where of course it transfers. So I am going to and no, there's no light coming through the eyeball. But if I stick it in his ear, which I know sounds funny, there, let's see if I can cover that part with my hand, the light right, the light around the eyeballs is on, I'm covering the majority of the light with the palm of my hand. So the light you see, right where I'm making a flash, is actually coming around the outer edge of the white. So it might be possible to illuminate around the eye sockets, but not necessarily the eyeball themselves, unless I can get a light inside. No, these eyes are not opaque. They're, they're pretty solid. I'll try and use this tool, but because of the way it's shaped, I might be able to take this gear off using a prying motion. Might. I have to use something to pry underneath it. I think it's pressed on pretty good bending the tool. do it, but we're going to try one other thing. Let's see if I can separate the face. The face is glued on. That I can see. There's glue all along these edges. So, a 
hopefully when I'm done, I can reassemble this and make it look like it did when I bought it. The glue goes to about here, which is about a half an inch below his teeth. free. Let's see this one has less glue. There we go. Yeah, this one has a lot less glue. It's the eyeball. It's not what I was going for. It's uh, they're stakes, and then the stakes have glue on them. They're plastic stakes, and the two on the top of the head are really far inside. Because this one's got a lot more glue, I'm going to use something stiffer than the spudger. Try and separate it. There we go. And that's what I mean about the plastic stakes. You can see that little piece of plastic sticking out. There's a hole in the back, and then they put a dab of glue on it. And then there's a stake here and a stake here, which those are freed up. There we go. So now there's no stakes here. It was just one. So there's a stake, a stake, a stake, a stake, and a clip. Now the face is off. These are really thick plastic. Uh, you can see on the edge. That's why they're not illuminating. The plastic is just going to be too thick for the LED to shine through. I'm going to stick the LED inside the eyeball. Like so. Like that. And no, the eye is not glowing. What you see here is the reflecting back into the hazard paint. There's no light coming through that eyeball because it's too thick. So if you're trying to modify this to make them light up, like I said, that was a, a suggestion on one of the YouTube videos. It's going to be almost impossible. Probably take the eyes out 
and sand them down on the inside to make them thinner. But they are pretty thick. It's actually a really strong plastic to use for the eyes. I am absolutely surprised. Also, I'd be afraid to try and pull them off the pressed on shaft because I wouldn't want to bend the shaft because they have to stay relatively centered to fit on that face so it doesn't rub the inside of the plastic right inside the eye cups. But you could put lights inside here and make around the eyes glow. So that's an option. And if you did decide to do anything like this, or you do decide, um, do not solder anything to those circuit boards. You'd want to run a resistor and have it come right off the incoming power, which is over there um, underneath the pile of what used to be a, a house. So, uh, and that, you could drill a little hole and actually hear the lights uh, in the center here. Huh, believe it or not, his nose comes off. It's actually just a glued on ball. But you could technically run the wires through the top, drill a hole, and then illuminate the entire skull area in here to have the eye sockets glow. And even maybe run an LED down in one or two on this flat plate right here to make the bottoms glow better. And I might try it. Again, I've already been committed to tearing apart a house that I didn't plan on tearing apart this far, but now you have a basic idea how this thing comes apart. You move the LED box out of the way. Uh, it, it's a snap and glue together house, heat gun, something to pry with, whether it be a hard piece of metal that's bent, a flexible spudger, blade screwdriver, zip, plural, different sizes. And just look for the flex points where the glue is baggy LEDs. And you're going to need lots of glue so you can glue all the little pieces back on. But it's plastic, so it's a little more forgiving than the resin or porcelain houses. It flexes, it doesn't just shatter, so that is a bonus. But anyhow, as far as this one goes, we have now disassembled it. Now we need to see if we're going to modify it. And we got to reassemble it. And hope to God that we do it right. <laughs> That is an expensive house to disassemble. So, uh, still not a big fan of the plastic, but as far as workability goes, I, I'm going to lean towards it's going to be better. Uh, if you're going to repair these at home, the plastic house technically is a little more forgiving and it's going to be easier to repair. Finding the gears going to be a little harder. Uh, the transmission setup they have on the motor and or the gearbox. That's pretty standard Limax. These big gears that they use, they're not um, easier, not as easy to find. Uh, I find gears like this inside old printers and um, scanners. They usually have the bigger, more aggressive teeth and they're thicker plastic and because they're moving the bar back and forth to print or to scan, they're, th they're a heavier duty. I'm sure if there was a part number on any of these gears, we could cross-reference it. This one just says four. It has the number four on it. This one has a number two on it. They um, appear to be the same gear, but two different numbers. So, Here's another one that looks to be the same, and this one has number four on it again. And this one This one also has the number four, the inner one, the bottom. So <sighs> It's not going to be the easiest stuff to cross-reference if you break them. So, so we're going to leave it for now. 
and I am going to try and devise a way to run some wires through here and try and make the eyes backlight at least around the eye sockets. It may make it look better, it may make it look worse, I don't know, but we're going to try it. So this concludes this part of disassembly. Now I have a big old literal pile of parts. Let me go to the camera so you can see. There's the big old pile. So yeah, fun. All right, well, we'll be back and we'll see what we can do about trying to do a little modification and get this thing back together in one piece fully functional.